the weather outside is frightful, but the fire is so delightful. So let's just stay inside and learn a little funk groove. One of the reasons I like the holidays is I get to bust out my favorite and only holiday shirt, featuring a very Christmassy Hallmark moment from the Skywalkers. This tune is quite a bit easier than most of the funk grooves I do. I'd put it squarely in that intermediate range. It's got one little chopsy thing at the end you can modify uh, and do with one hand if that works better for you. If you want MIDI files or sheet music or resources of that nature, just head over to GrooveWindow.com and find the corresponding page and you should be able to find whatever you need. Don't forget those are all free. To get things started, we might as well take a listen to it. Since the dawn of time, I've named my funk grooves with extremely unoriginal names. Funk groove number one in C. Funk groove number four in B flat. Funk groove number five in D minor. And as I'm planning to make a bunch more of these now, they need better names. Today's tune is called Lemon Drop. And it's a pretty good name for this tune, but I have to be honest, I actually was thinking of completely the wrong thing when I named it that. If you go hit Wikipedia and you look up Lemon Drop, the very first thing that shows up is a boozy cocktail, which isn't a bad thing that we could use to name this tune, but it wasn't what I was thinking of. I was actually thinking of candy from when I was a kid. If you look up what a Lemon Drop candy is, it's a really old school, like little lemon shaped, hard, like it's almost like sandpaper. You eat these things and they just like rip off the top of your mouth, <laughs> right? That isn't what I was thinking of. I was thinking of lemon heads. It's a little box of candy. It's got a little lemon head guy on the front and they're softer. They're just as sour and tart, but they're really sharp. And as a kid, I loved those things. Hit those things after school and power through a box. And I have to admit, when I bought them, you could get a box for a dime. To be honest, I don't know if they still make these things, but I think they might. We'll have to see. No luck, town pump. No lemon heads, no lemon drops. Moving on. This is in the key of A, and most of the melody is in octaves here. So you're gonna start on E's, then two, uh, G, A, A, G, A. And your right hand has a little whole step grace note. And then you're gonna go into the bass line in the left hand. You reach down an octave to A. Your melody in the right hand plays that same A in the same space. Okay, and then the bass line, which is kind of funky, up an octave to A, down to G, down to B flat. Hold that out for a while, and then it resolves to A. Now, as you play that B flat, in the left hand, you're gonna reach up and play a B flat 13th in your right hand. Classic voicing here. A 
flat, D, and G with the B flat in the, in the bass. And then all of that moves down a half step. B flat goes down to A, G, C sharp, and F sharp. <clears throat> Now there's one little funky thing here, which is as your left hand reaches up for that high A, the first note of the bass line, you play this little grace note with your right hand thumb. I'm a big fan of these, you know. On this E, just before you hit the A. It's kind of a little, little thing. And as you play the 13th in your right hand, can with your index finger kind of slide from C sharp up to D. Okay, so that first part. Okay, a little slower. Ah. Now the second time, you just repeat that exactly the same way, but in the right hand where you've got that 13th voicing that resolves, you're gonna play a little E that kind of helps with the melody. Okay, so first two lines together. Now we're gonna go up to D, which is the four chord in A. Okay, same melody, but this time your bass line goes down to D, and the melody goes up to a C natural. Same little E ghosting thing. So the bass line is D, up to D, down to C, down to E flat. Same ghosting in the right hand. With this E flat, we're gonna play an E flat ninth chord. Dominant seventh based. We've got a G, D flat, and an F. That all resolves down to half a step one more time. Okay, so D, F sharp, C, and E. Let's hear that little phrase. Okay, then it goes back to the beginning. With the little E part of the melody. Now we get into the turnaround. Same little melody figure. Um, we're gonna go to B7 here. Bass goes into B. The right hand plays a kind of a lead up from D to D sharp and B. Okay, then we go, this kind of funky thing, the right hand is gonna go F, F sharp, plays this giant sort of D7 chord. And if you can't reach this, if your hands aren't big enough, um, you can leave out the top D. It's more important that you have that D color in there. But if you can reach it and reach that 11th in there, get that, okay. So we've got B7. Now as you play the F natural and the F sharp into the D, your left hand is gonna walk up chromatically from B up to D, like that. And we do the same thing up to F. We've got A flat, A, and then this is a big 13th voicing. Um, e flat, A, D, F, once again, if this is hard for you to reach with your stretch, leave that top F out and just do the 13th voicing. And in the left hand and the bass, we're gonna walk up chromatically again from D to F. Okay, and then all of this is gonna resolve down a half a step to E13. Okay, before we get into the lick. So let's listen to that, B, I'll do this slowly. Sometimes I play a little D before I hit that in the bass line. Okay, now we're doing the lick. This is octaves in both hands. You cheat a little bit on the left hand and I'll show you. So first of all, with the right hand, up to A. 
then we're gonna drop down with a, to D with a little E flat grace note. C, D, C, E, and then a little triplet, E flat, D, C, down to A, G, D, C, A, G, A. Okay, that won't make any sense. Let me do it slowly. Okay, one more time. I like to do a little C whole step grace note when we come back up to the D. Okay, so then you add to that with your left hand. And here's where we cheat. In the left hand, don't do the triplet. Hit the E together, and then while your right hand is doing the triplet, just play at D. And skip out the C and just go down to A. So. That's all you gotta do in the left hand. So together. Okay, a little faster. I always say this, get out that metronome. This is the chopsiest part of the tune. And uh, if you can do it slowly, you can do it quickly. Just check with two set violin. And then we go to this big chord. Um, let's see what it. tones in this at all, just a big D. I'm using this Fender Rhodes patch that doesn't have a low D, but on a, an acoustic piano this kills. D, D major, which is A, D, F sharp, and A. And then you go to this 13th voicing. Go down and the to the A and on an acoustic piano. We've got um, lowest note on the piano, yes. In the right hand, G, C sharp, F sharp, and A classic um, 13th voicings with the octave on top. Again, if that's too much for your hand, if it's too large, leave out the top notes. That's fine. Okay, so that whole last lick, both hands at a medium tempo. A little faster. One more time. And I like to gliss at the end of that because this is a big, like, we That's kind of the end of the first phrase. Now, let's get into the second half. It's very similar, melody is the same all the way throughout, but we change it up for this big suspended set of chords in the right hand, combined with this, call it a James Brown bass line in the left hand. So same melody, exactly the same, but now you're gonna reach up with your right hand and hit, this is a D over G, or a, you might call it an A sus4 chord. A 11th in some cases, but we want this to resolve from the D down to the C sharp. And I like to grace note if you can do it with your index finger from C sharp up to D. Now, what's the left hand doing? It's doing this cool little bass line. That's what I mean by James Brown. Yeah. Right hand, combine that with the suspension. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I like this one. <laughs> Same thing, now we're going up to the four. Just like in the first half, 
but we're gonna do that same suspension, same bass line. Reach up here to C, G, B, and D, and that G is gonna resolve to F sharp. Okay, and again, I like to, if you can do it, index finger grace note off of that F sharp into the G. Okay, but at the end of this, this is kind of fun in the bass line. Right after you hit that, reach way down to F sharp here. And walk it up chromatically in the left hand as you play the melody only in the right hand. So from the four. One more time. And then we're back to the first half, the A figure. And guess what? The ending of the second phrase is exactly the same as what we did in the first time. All right. With that, I know there's little bits and pieces all over the place, some good chords. It's actually fairly simple. Uh, woodshed that lick and get that down, and you'll be able to play the whole tune. As always, if you're interested, click subscribe, click like, click buttons, um, things like that help me out. Um, and I hope to see you next time.